Hi everyone, my name is Monique. And I'm Naveen. And this is Hedgehog Hop. Brought to you by Fight in a Box. Yes. So Hedgehog Hop is a uh, puzzly card game about uh, dancing hedgehog yeah. mobs <laughs> and who can be the best hedgehog dancer. Correct. So tonight, we're going to play it. Shall we? Yes. So we're going to go ahead and get it set up and then uh, we'll see you in a bit. Okay, so we are now set up for a two-player game of Hedgehog Hop. And as you can see, we have our 3x3 dance mob grid laid out on the table. And so um, the way that it works is Hedgehog Hop comes with a deck of cards. And the cards all feature these awesome dancing, <laughs> dancing hedgehogs. <laughs> there are four different colors of cards. There's purple, uh, green, red, and blue, blue which is there. Which is there. Mm -hmm. It's not on the table. And uh, each hedgehog also has one of three different move types, and the moves are, are up here with the arrow yeah, the pointing out the top left corner. Mm -hmm. uh, there's hop, which is an upward pointing arrow, there's groove, which points to the right, and slide, which points to the left. And the last thing is they each also have uh, a symbol at the bottom left hand, hand corner, which indicates what style of dance they do. There are four different types. The fire is spicy. Mm -hmm. The face is a rave. These are the raving hedgehog. Yep. The CD is a retro, I believe. Yep. And then the hat is street. Okay, so to set up a game, you have to set up the dance mob. And that's going to be the three by three grid. And then each player also has a hand of seven cards. Seven, yep. And so the way that it works is on your turn, you're going to take one of these seven cards and you're going to play it onto the table um, along the grid, right. and depending on which card you play, is going to uh, is going to tell you which part of the grid you're going to play your card to. So, all slide cards, which are the leftward arrow, are going to be played to the right of the grid. And when you play a card, it's going to cause either a row or a column to move to shift over to make room for this dancing hedgehog. Right. This hedgehog is just dancing so much. So the left the left arrow slides the row to the left because that is the direction the arrow is pointing. Right. And then your hedgehog that you played is going to come right in right there. Mm -hmm. uh, if you play a, a hop, which is an upward arrow, the hops are played below the grid, and they cause the grid, the, the grid column to shift upwards, making room for that hedgehog. It's like this. And then the last uh, move type is groove, and the groove cards are played to the left of the grid. And these cause the row to shift over to the right, just like we saw the other ones do. Right. And so the way that it works is you're going to take one of your cards from your hand, and you're going to play it onto the grid. And then once you, let's say, for example, I were to play this card, once you go ahead and shift over the row, the next thing that you have to do is you check the grid to see if, if you attracted any backup dancers. Was your hedgehog cool enough to attract these backup mm -hmm. dancers? And so what you do is you look orthogonally adjacent to the card that you just played. So in this example, it would be these two cards. You're going to check to see, first, the mandatory thing you have to check is do they share the same move? If so, then you also check if they either share the same color or style. Right. And if they do, then you get one backup dancer from the draw deck for each of these cards that apply. Right. So in this example, the only card that matches is this card right here. Right, because they're both they, sliding. They're both sliding and they're both purple. So in this example, I would get a card from the draw deck. And backup dancers come to you face up in front of you. And then from now on, starting with your next turn, you can either play a card from your hand or you can play one of the backup dancers in front of you instead, if you'd like to do that instead. But if you were to play a backup dancer in front of you to the grid, then you have to discard a card from your hand right. because you always have to have the same, same number, same of, number cards. Of, of cards right. as your opponent. Um, and so the game continues uh, until both players have only one card left in their hand. And so that last card is your lead dancer. Mm -hmm. And this is how you determine points, because a game of Hedgehog Cup is won by whoever was able to earn the most amount of points. Right. And so uh, in this example, if I were to have played this last card as my lead dancer, first thing that happens at the end of the game is you score one point for each backup dancer you still have left in front of you. So if you use that backup dancer, you don't score for that, right. that card at all. And then for the lead dancer that you have left over, you're going to score for all three of its properties. You're going to score for its uh, move, its color, and its style. Right. And so the way that it works is you're going to look at the grid, the finished grid, whatever it looks like at the end of the game. And for the color, you're going to look at the largest contiguous group of the same color 
on the grid. And so in this exa example, and those are orthogonally adjacent, so right. the diagonals don't count. But in this example, my card is green, so I would get one point. It's one point per card in that group. Um, for its move, it's a, it's a hop move, and right now the largest group are these two. And so I would get two points for its move. And then for its style, it's the CD. I don't. It doesn't look like we have just one. Only. Yeah, just just the one point here. Typically, you'll have like larger groups of things because right. you're kind of strategizing you're playing towards cards. It. Yeah, trying to move things around to favor your to your favor final your, dancer. your final dancer. Yeah, and so whoever has the most points at the end of the game wins. In the case of a tie, whoever has the most uh, backup dancers still in front of them wins the game. Okay. okay? So we are going to reshuffle Not these either. cards. And then we're going to go ahead and end to a, a nice, nice quick run through. Quick run through on this one. Okay. All right. So the, the rule book states that whoever was the, the one who most recently went dancing gets to go first. In our case, I think we both went dancing at the same time. Probably so we're going to yeah. go in uh, our usual fashion of good old rock, paper, scissors. Ready? One, two, three. Oh, okay. So you get the cards. Okay, so. First action here, let's go ahead and try to get some points. Um, That's not a bad idea. <laughs> let's do it. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and play a groove card here. That's gonna force everything to slide down in this manner here. The move that is mirrored is groove and groove, so these are the only cards that are eligible. And they share the same color. They don't share the same dance move, but they share the same color, so I get a backup dancer here. Nice. Okay. okay. I am going to play a slide. So this slide will push. Back. Yeah, we'll shift all of these cards back this way. I start a war. And these two share the same move and they share the same style. So nice. I get one two. back of that. Is that one or two? Oh, sorry. Just, just one. one yeah. Because there's no other neighbors. Right. Thank you. They'll come in front of me. Okay, so now it's my turn. Hmm. Okay, I'll play slide over here. Okay, just kind of got a little conveyor belt thing going on over here. I'm gonna slide it on down, and they share the same move and the same color. So I get one backup dancer. Okay, I'm going to play this hop. Just going to push all of these cards. Oops, sorry, all these cards upwards this way. And because okay. it doesn't share a move with any of its orthogonally adjacent partners, I don't get any backup no, dancers. Yeah, no backup dancers. No. I'm going to go ahead and put hop here. I'm going to slide that up. And that goes there. So it only shares with this one. They're the same color. So I get a backup dancer. Okay. Uh, let's see. Okay. I'm going to play this groove over here. Okay. which would cause this to shift over like that. And then I don't... <laughs> no benefit. <laughs> I'm not getting very uh, very good hedgehogs. No. <laughs> My hedgehogs are not attractive, mm -hmm. unfortunately. All no right. dancing styles, at so least. I'll go ahead and groove here. We'll shift you over. And because these share the same color, I get a backup dancer. Nice. Okay, so I am going to play Mr. Red Groove over here. Okay. That's going to shift all these over. And then I, again, don't get <laughs> a backup dancer. I'm okay. probably going to go the whole game without getting a backup dancer, unfortunately. Okay. Well, I have this one. He believed in me. <laughs> all right, let's go ahead and groove. Groove again? Yeah, let's go ahead and groove and slide these all down. Lots of groove in here. Groove in. And so because they show the same move and they're red, I get a backup dancer. Okay. So. <gasps> oh my goodness. I think it's okay. So I'm going to play this hop, which gives me a backup dancer there finally. You go. Because it, you, they share a, a move and, a, and style. Okay. There we go. This is your last card. This is my last card. The last card of the how round. I, so how can I mess with you? Make it count. It's possible. So this is the time of the game that you really want to examine the grid and see the last two cards in your hand who are available to become lead dancers because um, you, know, you only have one more turn to see how many points you're going to score at the end. Right. 
Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I don't know if this is good or not. I'll play hop there. Slides up and it's red, so I'll go ahead and take this. So okay, yep, they share a move and a color. And so now I'm trying to, in my head, I'm trying to plan for my ending strategy, right. but I'm also trying to see what he, I'm trying to think about what he is trying to go for mm -hmm. to see if I can kind of mess that up somehow, which honestly I have no idea what he has in his hand. So I think I am better off just playing something. Mm. I am going to, I'm going to groove. I'm going to groove. So let's groove over here. So it shifts all of these cuties this way mm -hmm. and gives me no backup dancers. No backup dancers, okay. <laughs> oh, we could have shared, oh darn, but yeah. we don't share the same color or style. Or okay. style, yeah. So no backup dancers. Okay. So we have reached the end of the game. We're going to now move into end game scoring. Right. So at the count of three. Reveal your lead dancer. One, two, three. <sighs> Purple slide from the streets. I've got a groovin. Looks like mine's like a blue groovin hedgehog with a Christmas raver. lights. <laughs> oh, he's a raver. That's why. Okay. So do you want to score first since sure, you absolutely. went first? Okay. So this is the one I'm scoring. So we got one, oh my two, gosh. three, four, five, six. I was able <laughs> yeah. to get six backup dancers. So even if we end in a tie, then I'll be happy. So... Uh, first thing we'll analyze is the longest contiguous color. I think there is purple three here and purple three there. So six plus three is nine. Yep. Uh, three the points. next thing so you is get three points for color. The move itself is. I think there's only two slides next to each other. We have. Maybe I see I'm these wrong. two. And I see these two over here. I think that was that. Yep. Looks like two points okay, for so slide. Uh, nine plus two is eleven. 11. And then unfortunately, I could Hats. never get the hats. To come out and touch, so I I I see a bunch of just individual hats mm. out there. So just so, one point. Yeah, one point. So that makes it twelve. Twelve points. Twelve points. Okay. Yeah. All right. So let's score Mr. Blue Groove here. So I have two backup dancers. That's two points. He's blue, so it looks like four points. Okay, so you're at six. For blue, so I'm at six. He's a groove. Uh, uh, I actually don't know what what happened to the grooves. I see two here. I see two there. I see one. Oh, I see a big two, one. three, four, five here. Yes, that's pretty good. I know that there was like a big groove group going on earlier, but it, <laughs> everything just went went away. So that's five. Yeah, that's so five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven looks uh -oh. like, and then <laughs> I see a lot rave. of teddy bears. I yeah. see some some raves. So I have one, two, three, four. Yes. Four. So that's what four, five, six, 15. seven, eight, nine, ten. 10, What was the last one? Groove. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Yeah, fifteen. Fifteen points. Fifteen to twelve. 15 to 12. Not bad. So those backup dancers our, didn't do anything. Our dance mob, our final dance mobs yes. turn out. Hopefully it was a flash mob. Mm -hmm. well, that was good planning. <laughs> good game. Worked all together. Cool. So we're going to clean up the game and we'll let you know what we think. See you in a second. Okay. So we just finished playing a two-player game of Hedgehog Hop. And how'd it go? You beat me. I, <laughs> was, uh, I thought I had those backup dancers, but you had the... The lone dancer. Yeah, I was going to say, what can I say? Yeah, My dancer was grooving. Yeah. <laughs> I had a, I had a star hedgehog. He did. He killed it. <laughs> he did. So what did you think of the game? Uh, I like the game. It, it, I, I do like it. Um, it's quick, easy to teach. Uh, I mean, it was over five minutes. Yeah. So I like weird. that. I like that about a, ga a game, you know, for two players, which is perfect for us. Great. Yeah, you're in, you're out. In and out. Yeah. How about yourself? Oh, I really, really enjoyed it. So yeah. I, I really like um, heavy euros and like really quick card games. And this fits in that really quick card game yep. slot. It's probably quicker than all the other really quick card games I yeah. play. Um, I love it because the theme is adorable. If you read through the rule book, it's hilarious. I think the first time I read through it, I couldn't, I was like giggling yeah, the actually. whole time. Because it talks about these grooving hedgehogs and the different kinds of dancing that they do. Um, but it, the other reason why I really like it is because it's there's a lot of strategy to it. There is, yeah. It's so fast, but the whole time, the first time I played it, I thought like, man, I'm not getting any of these backup dancers. And it, it was kind of making me nervous because he's racking up all these points mm -hmm. with the backup dancers. But really, the point of the game is not the backup dancers. It's that end game lead dancer. Right, right. So you're both contributing to this grid um, that's going to affect the way that your last dancer scores. Sure. And so it, it's interesting because you don't know how you're going to do it until the very end. You can try to plan for it. But so, so when I'm playing the game, this whole time I'm switching who my lead dancer is going to be constantly right. because yeah. I want to maximize those points. Yeah, I think that was my problem. I kind of 
maybe within the first two or three turns, I just kind of said, okay, I'm going to try to make this one dancer oh. my back, my, my main one. So um, I should have probably used some of those backup dancers because that gave me a whole wider array of right. uh, people to, to put use them on the table. to kind of manipulate to maybe then make that. that, that uh, but I was trying to hold on to every single point. So um, that's good. That, that element of it is also there. So Yeah, that's excellent. I think, I think it's a fantastic game. Yeah, I highly, quick. highly recommend it. Yeah. That's so it. Yeah. cool. Thank you. Thanks for watching.